Hey, Tom Morley here from FOSS 365. I've got another quick tip video on the Natron compositor. Now, if you've watched my other video on how to install the GMIC plugins, well, you're in for a treat because if you haven't downloaded them yet, there are near 100 new nodes that the community put together in plugins for Natron. When you open Natron, you're not going to see them. Let's just get an idea of what we're looking at here. We'll open up Natron, and here is the, um, the GMIC plugins that we installed in the previous video. And you'll, you can see there's no icon here that sort of looks like a plugin. So what we're going to do is we're going to get a hundred more nodes for Natron that the community created for us. So let's go ahead and close Natron and let's open a browser. Okay, and you're going to want to type in Natron Community Plugins. You go to the GitHub web page and make sure that you're in the Natron Video Effects slash Natron Plugin section. Click on Clone or Download. Download the zip. Once you've downloaded it, then you're going to want to, I'm going to cut it and I'm going to go to where I installed Natron, which I installed it in my apps folder under Natron. When you go into that folder, you're going to see a plugins folder. So go into the plugins and you're going to see a Pi plugins folder. Go into that one and that's where you're going to want to paste that zip file. Now I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to extract it here so that I get the Natron plugins master folder in here. And that's going to contain all of the community plugins that are available. There's, I think there's a hundred new nodes in here. I mean, it's, it's absolutely crazy. So now that you've done that, um, if you want to, you can delete this zip file. We're done with this. We're done with the browser. So now we're going to go back into Natron. And when we go back into Natron, you're going to notice a plug type end here, and that's the community plugins. So when you click here, you're going to see a whole bunch of new menu items that you can pick from. So let me grab a CC0 picture of Mad Max here, and uh, let's just look at a couple of the things that you can do here. Well, one of the things that you can do is um, that I thought was pretty cool is this chromatic aberration here. Check it out. It gives you that nice kind of skewed red, blue, green, blurry edges and, and a nice crisp center here. Uh, I can show you the difference by pressing D here. I mean, that's pretty cool. I thought that was pretty neat. So let me make this a little bit bigger so we can see a little bit better. Okay, so that, that one's pretty cool. And you know, you've got all kinds of filters here that you can mess with. They have a vignette, which put a nice vignette on things. All kinds of settings over here. I and mean, you, can, you can go crazy with what they have in here. I was really surprised by what they've done. There's a GLSL folder, and this contains a bunch of nodes that can use your graphic card to render. So they're really, really fast if you've got a, a high-end graphic card. So... So here's a pretty cool one, uh, Pixel Displace GL. And this one's pretty cool because it gives you kind of a cool looking, you know, displacement on your picture just by itself. But then you can use a displacement map and that displacement map can do all kinds of weird things. So um, you can start combining, you know, the GMIC and the community plugins. And we talked about the shader toy node as well. So let's grab the shader toy node. Let's put it in here. Let's kind of change that preset to infinite falling. So the infinite fall is pretty cool on its own, but you use that as a displacement map in this pixel displace node. And man, you, you can really get almost like a dreamy type quality to 
your effect. It's going to basically displace the picture based on whatever your displacement map is. So th this is pretty cool. This kind of gives like a watery type, never ending tunnel to your video or your image. So that's that's pretty cool. That's a pretty cool one. I like that one. Um, you know, you can go on and on in here. We also have effects which are pretty cool. You want to pixelate it and make it look like it was way back in the Commodore 64 days. Well, there you go. Brings back some bad memories for me. Um, and that also has a has a way for you to manipulate the the way it creates the pixels. So let's look at um, a couple more here. Oh, and it also has a graphic card accelerated merge nodes. So, you know, this is just like your regular merge node, you know, A over B, but this node uses your graphic card to accelerate the compositing of your different layers. So if I wanted to, for instance, put a text node over that, and just grab the text node, and it's just like any other, like the regular merge node, you know, there's my text, and let me, um, Make that a little bit, little bit larger, I guess. Um, where's my font size down here? There you go. Let's just change the color to red so we can see it. Now um, I'm going to go to the very beginning here. And so this is not like a super intensive merge type situation, but uh, just to show you how it works, you've got the merge node here. Um, I'm going to create a keyframe for the location. I'm going to right click there, set a key on both of these, all dimensions, both of the dimensions here. I'm going to go to the last frame and I'm going to grab my text. I'm going to move it down here and it's going to create an automatic keyframe when I do that. So now you can see it basically doing its merging of the text over the image in the background. It's using my graphic card to render all the frames. So it's pretty darn fast. I did a quick test and I do believe that this merge GL, um, that this merge node is going to be faster if you have a large amount of merge nodes in your project. So that's uh, something to keep in mind. You might want to do a test to see if this merge node would be faster than the default merge node in Natron. And it also has the, not all of the operations that the default merge node has, but it does have quite a few, like over, overlay, um, color burn, dodge, mix, lighten, lighten color, you know, so it's got quite a few different ways that you can merge A over B. So. Take a look at that. It may help you out. It may make some of your projects uh, render a little bit faster. And that was from the community. We have a Natron Programmers page on Facebook. And um, for Bryce Fernandez, I hope I didn't murder his name, he's been cranking out some of these community plugins that you see in the GLSL folder. I mean, I think he's done 20 of them himself. So he's, uh, he's doing a great job. Uh, thank you a lot for that. I appreciate it. I'm sure everybody appreciates it. So, uh, yeah, I guess all I'm saying is go get it, you know, download the, these community plugins that will allow you to do all kinds of cool things, keying, merging, um, also has some source stuff in there, sort of like the shader toy, if you wanted to maybe have bubbles in there. Um, don't need that anymore. So it's got a nice bubble effect that renders using the graphic card. So it's really, really fast that you could use as a background for something. So there's a lot of good things here. Uh, take a look, go through it, and um, you never know. There might be something in there that you, um, that you think is really cool, okay? So I hope uh, you learned something here. I hope you download these because they're really cool. And uh, I'll see you in the next Natron video.